The Anacalypsis, 1874, an inquiry into the origin of languages, nations, and religions by Godfrey Higgins. However, I say not that they were black, but I shall, in the course of this work, produce a number of extraordinary facts which will be quite sufficient to prove that a black race in very early times had more influence over the affairs of the world than has been lately suspected, and I think that I shall show by some very striking circumstances yet existing that the effects of this influence have not entirely passed away. It was the opinion of Sir William Jones that a great nation of blacks formerly possessed the dominion of Asia and held the seat of the empire of Sidon. The religion of Buddha of India is well known to have been very ancient and the most ancient temples scattered throughout Asia where his worship is yet continued. He is found black as jet with the flat face, thick lips and curly hair of the Negro. To what time are we to allot this Negro? The religion of this Negro God is found by the ruins of his temples and other circumstances to have been spread over an immense extent of country, even to the remotest parts of Britain, and to have been professed by devotees inconceivably numerous. Page 51, he tells us that there's two Ethiopias, that the Ethiopia we know now is not the original Ethiopia, that the original Ethiopia was in farther west, the Indias, East, A or west, or east Asia, and that those original Ethiopians actually fled over to Africa, fled to the West. And it's been hidden. You have some hijackers out here who are stealing history in the Eastern and Western Ethiopia. And it is probable, probable that by an Ethiopian, a Negro, correctly speaking, may have meant not merely a black person. Oh, so there's a difference between a Negro and a black person. You go into the, what is it, the Bible dictionary that tells you that Ham is the progenitor of the dark-skinned races of people, and it specifically says, not the Negro. So the Negro is not a Hamite, and it's telling you in the Anacalypsis that there's a difference between a black person and an Ethiopian or a Negro. And it seems probable that the following may have been a real fact. That a race, either of Negroes or blacks, but probably of the former, came from India to the West, occupying or conquering the former... Uh, and forming a kingdom on the two banks of the Euphrates and eastern Ethiopia. And that a very great nation of blacks from India did rule over almost all Asia in a very remote area, in fact beyond the reach of history or any of our records. This is what has been observed respecting judicial astrology will be retained in the recollection by my reader. They will, be both, they will both be found of a great importance in our future inquiries. And my essay on the Celtic Druids, oh, go do some uh, research on ancient and modern Britons and the Black Celts. And the original skeletons, the original inhabitants of the British Isles and Iberian Peninsula. It has shown that a great nation called Celte, of whom the Druids were the priest, spread themselves almost over the whole earth. Now go look up Acts 29. The Christian and Catholic Church removed Acts 29 from the Bible. And go see what Paul, and go see where Paul went and who he met with. You're going to see the Druids show up in the Bible. And that Paul went to go talk to the Druids. And he says they are his people. Who these can have be, uh, been but the early individuals of the black nation of, of whom we have been treating. I know not, and in this opinion, I am not singular. The learned Maurices, Cuthites or Cushites, i.e. Celts, built the great temples in India and Britain and excavated the caves of the former. And the learned mathematician Reuben Burrow has no hesitation in pronouncing Stonehenge to be a temple of the black curly-headed Buddha. Now we're going to get into Krishna, page 209. Mr. Crozier observes that the images of Krishna and Buddha are so similar that it is difficult to distinguish them. And the group, 
pictured above is acknowledged by more in his Hindu pantheon, or uh, pantheon, to be applicable to the Buddha on the knee of his beautiful mother Maya. But yet there is one circumstance of very great importance, which is particular to Buddha and forms a discriminating mark between him and Krishna, which is that he is continuously described as a Negro, not only with a black complexion in which he agrees with Krishna, but with woolly hair and flat face. Mr. Krezier, uh, Krezier observes that the black Buddha with frizzled or curled hair attaches himself at the same time to the three systems in which the religion of India divides itself. Mr. Moore on his woolly head says, Some statues of Buddha certainly exhibit thick Ethiopian lips, but all woolly hair. There is something mysterious and unexplained connected with the hair of this and only of this Indian deity. The fact that so many different tales have been invented to account for his crisped, woolly head is alone sufficient to excite suspicion we're going to jump down here that, that we're going to continue it's going to say something really interesting but i want to jump down here to the footnotes of what it says the lips are often tinged with red to show that the blackness does not arise from the color of the bronze or stone which an image is made but that of black is the color of the god now we're going to keep on going over here continue from this uh suspicion that there is something to conceal something to be ashamed of more that meets the eye the reason why buddha is a negro is at least in a very old icons i trust shall be able to explain in a satisfactory manner hereafter all right page 348 the fact of the black god krishna being found in italy Germany, Switzerland, and France is it of itself independent of all other circumstances, sufficient to decide the question, how come, uh, how came the French and Italians to dye their own god Krishna black before they sent him, uh, before they sent icons of him to India? How came his mother to be black, the black Venus or Isis, the mother, the virgin mother of the divine love? of our R of R or Horus, the Lux of Saint John, the Regina Coli, treading in the sphere on the head of the serpent, all marks of the of the Jesus of Bethlehem or the Temple of the Sun or of Caress, but not of Jesus of Nazareth. So he's saying, essentially, you're telling me all of these icons leading up to Jesus, Christos, all these people that have stolen the identity of this character are portrayed as black, but not Jesus himself. Again, we see that Jewish and Christian doctrines are to be found among the ancient Brahmins, as well as their Negro black skinned God. May not this nation have been a nation of black Buddhist May not the peaceable religion of the curly-headed Buddha have pervaded and kept in peace for many generations of which we have no history of the whole of Asia. And in favor of this opinion, there are many trifling circumstances which may induce a opinion that there are many are uh, induce a person to think that Mount Gerizim, the favorite place of Joshua, the priest king, Joshua, the priest king, was in a very in very remote times like the capital of the Lama of Tibet, a place of great sanctity. Who was Melchizedek? Was he a grand Lama? You're going to go and you're going to see more connections to Melchizedek and Buddha. Page 369. I must now once more bring back the attention of my reader to the curly-headed, flat-faced, thick-lipped, black-skinned buddha almost forgotten for these singularities we have not yet attempted to give any reasons this negro god cannot have been the only uh negro east of the indus without some cause so he's saying if their god's negro that means the people that created him or the people that worshipped him or the people of the area must have been negro at well as well at some point on this subject credible history is silent of course they're silent Anything with black history is silent. Page 